Hello everyone. Welcome to Raw Online. I'm Dr. Abhinaya. I'm a consultant pediatrician. Welcome to Nelson based pediatric teaching. In the chapter of respiratory system, the topic of discussion now is on acute bronchiolitis. So I'm sure you you would have all managed cases of acute bronchiolitis especially during winters and late springs and yet after managing so many cases still uh, some of us have doubts on what is the effective management, what management works and what we should not do. So bronchiolitis is a very very important topic both from a clinical point of view and from an examination point of view. So what I am going to discuss in this presentation is going to be a comprehensive one starting from the basic definition of bronchiolitis. How are we going to classify, uh, classify bronchiolitis based on the severity? What, is, what are the clinical features like and how the bronchiolitis progress? So we are going to uh, talk about in a graphical uh, representation manner and finally about the investigations and the treatment part. Of course, the treatment part, there are going to be guidelines and so this is going to be a very interesting and uh, important topic. So let's get started. So the basic definition we all know bronchiolitis is an acute inflammatory condition of the lower airways. So, most of the bronchiolitis cases, okay, you take 99.9 percent, .9%, it is going to be caused by a virus induced injury. So, we know it is, most of it is caused by viruses and among all the viruses, respiratory syncytial virus, the RSV is the most common viral agent isolated. This is true for both worldwide and for Indian subcontinent and this is going, this is the most common agent which has been studied in the Indian studies also. So, apart from RSV, what are the other viruses we should know? So, some of the viruses I have listed here, of course, this is not going to be an like all in one list, but some of the other common viruses will be rhinovirus, parainfluenza virus, adenovirus, human metanemovirus and Boca virus. In older children and even in adolescents sometimes, so mycoplasma can be a causative agent for bronchiolitis. So, this slide is very very important where we are going to talk about the pathophysiology because when we need what we need to know while we treat the cases of bronchiolitis is that what modalities of treatment work and what will not work. So, to understand that we need to understand what exactly happens in a bronchiolitis. Okay. So, the pathophysiology here this is a very very beautiful representative image of what happens in a bronchiolitis. So, this is the lower airways. So, the, there is inflammation of the lower airways. So, what happens? So, the lower airways, there is so much of mucus getting secreted by the goblet cells. So, there is a buildup of mucus as you can see here. There is so much of cell death, that is necrosis happening in the lower airways. So, there is necrosis, there is loss of the healthy epithelium, respiratory epithelium is getting lost, inflammation is going on. Apart from this, which is happening in the lumen, there is going to be a smooth muscle tightening also around the bronchial tubes. Whenever there is an obstruction, if it is a complete obstruction, what happens? The alveoli starts collapsing. La rather, when there is a partial obstruction, what happens? These alveoli can get trapped with air. So, they become overinflated. So, there is like a one-way traffic. The air goes in, but because of the partial obstruction, the air does not go out. So, it gets overinflated. So, usually what we say when we do an x-ray, we get a picture of hyperinflation in these children with bronchiolitis. So, this is the pathophysiology, right? So, there is going to be cellular inflammation, there is mucosal edema, there is cellular death and ciliary dysfunction, etc. So, this you should understand and I am going to corroborate this with the treatment modalities later on, okay? So, finally, this one point you all should remember. Okay. So, there is lower airway obstruction, but this obstruction happens not due to the bronchoconstriction, but it happens due to cellular debris, right. So, the blocking of the cellular lumen actually happens due to the necrotic cell debris, okay. Understand this, remember this point, we will 